Hi, myself Dr. Vivek Shashindran. In the last uh, video, we spoke about epistaxis or nasal bleeding. We spoke about the different situations where you can land up with uh, nasal bleed. We spoke about the first aid measures. So today, I would move on to treatment options when it comes to nasal bleed. So generally, when a patient is brought to the casualty with nasal bleed, the first and foremost thing is to ensure that the vitals of the patient are stable and subsequently we if there is active bleeding we introduce nasal packs so these can be sponge like packs or these can be ribbon gauzes which are uh, pushed into the nasal cavity to kind of stop the nasal bleeding subsequently if the patient has lost significant amounts of blood we may have to transfuse blood the other parameters like the blood pressure a detailed history into the medications that the patient is on all these would have to be taken because as I had already mentioned patients who are on blood thinners have a tendency to develop nasal bleed or if the patient has a chronic liver disease there is a tendency that these patients can bleed in chronic liver disease basically the patients will have a deranged clotting mechanism so these are the subset of patients who are likely to have recurrent episodes of nasal bleed. Now after removal of the nasal pack, which is usually done 24 to 48 hours later, the patient is subjected to a nasal endoscopy. So the nasal endoscopy will help us pick up if there are any active bleeding points in the nose. If so, we can actually cauterize it with the help of chemical or using an electrocautery. Now this can be done in the OPD itself. If there are any nasal masses, these masses will have to be evaluated further with radiological evaluation or we may have to even do a biopsy. And subsequently, based on the report, the treatment has to be initiated. Now, a small subset of patients would have no significant nasal findings, however, the bleeding can recur. So in those kind of patients, we have options of clipping the blood vessel that brings the blood supply to the nasal cavity that is the sphenopalatine artery in such subset of patients we do what is called as a endoscopic sphenopalatine artery ligation and in a subset of patients in spite of ligating this artery the bleeding could still persist in those situations one could resort to ligation of the external carotid which is ligated in the neck or we could actually seek the help of an interventional radiologist who could actually kind of detect which is the bleeding vessel and subsequently you can inject some particles into that blood vessel and block the blood vessel. Thank you.